Hey everybody, it's Rockula, and welcome back to Rockula Retrospective. This is part two of the weekend full review of season five, episode 12 of The Walking Dead, titled Remember, and this is a discussion about Rick's group. So if you haven't seen part one of the full review yet, it's here, and it is when I discuss all of the new situations with the people of Alexandria. But what I want to talk about first is the combined psyche of Rick's group, and all of them have some kind of psychological damage from being in such a prolonged, dangerous environment. Everybody's got varying degrees of the crazies, and I'm not sure if a, the true clinical term for what they have is PTSD, but most of us think of PTSD as a certain thing, and I'm going to just kind of equate it with PTSD right now. Obviously, Rick is the prime example of someone trying to struggle with the idea of normalcy, but uh, everybody else has got their varying degrees on it, but Rick is definitely the one that has the most to lose because he's got Carl and Judith. When Michonne gets interviewed, she asserts her claim that the whole group is ready for Alexandria, even when Deanna clearly knows that Daryl is not ready for Alexandria. And is her assertive opinion going to cause a rift in the future? So the person that has to have gotten the most thumbs up for this episode has to be Carol. Um, you know, obviously... I was confused. Everybody was confused when she started talking about her dead husband as that big dumb goof or whatever. And it's like, wait a second. She is the only person that is blatantly deceiving everybody about herself. Rick is being very guarded. Everybody else is being a little bit open. And of course, Daryl is being Daryl, but Carol is the only person that has done anything really calculated so far. And I was really confused at the beginning when she was all, like, awkward and weak looking when she tried to take off her, her gun. But now I see she's manipulating everything. And uh, another point about Carol is when she left Carl alone in the house for his big non-scare moment, she picks up a pen and a pad of paper. And the next time you see her on screen, she's drawing a map on the pad of paper. So she has already started to try to infiltrate the town. And of course, Carol and her mom jeans, that's exactly what she's going to do. She's going to go in, hear all the gossip, talk to everybody and make them think that she is the den mother and she's going to collect more data on that town than anybody else in our whole group. <laughs> Let's transition from Carol to Daryl. Daryl's not fitting in, and Carol sees this, and she uses her relationship with Daryl to pretty much threaten him and say that she's going to hose him down in his sleep and so forth, but she's really got a valid point in that you could still be as skeptical as you want, but at the same time, in order to assess this situation, we all have to go in under the radar, and your behavior is not helping one bit. So... We're going to have some issues with Daryl, and actually I'm going to talk about Daryl in the next episode, which is the previews and the predictions and so forth. But now let's talk about Carl. Right now, we've got Carl. Uh, Rick really trusts him. He doesn't even bust his chops about being outside the perimeter. When Carl hits the walker, he's he feels like he needs to keep sharp because he doesn't want to get weak. And Rick gives him that look. He's like, hey, I, I respect you for not wanting to get weak. But when he meets the kids, he has that one moment where he freaks out. And I think what happened is he had a flash of watching all of these kids die. And that's when he saw that everybody was weak. So 
he's still having a conflict over whether or not everybody's weak and he's voicing it to his father and let's talk about Enid. Enid I predict is going to be Carl's girlfriend because she is showing Carl that she is not weak like everybody else and she's going to end up kind of, you know, when, when Carl says, you must hate me, I don't think she hates him at all. In fact, she's going to be Carl's girlfriend in the future. I think right now, if there's any reason to hate Carl, it's because he was a douchebag and folded her goddamn comic. So let's round off the cast here and talk about people in order of screen time. We got Glenn, Tara, and um, Noah, who went out on the run. We all saw the, the results of that and how Glenn proved he is a badass. And so that situation, the only thing that I see new is that there's, you know, going to be some kind of conflict between Glenn and Aiden in the future and that Deanna respects him. Then we've got Seamus who only says, who's Deanna? And last but not least, we've got Eugene. And my question is, has Eugene gotten a haircut and a shower yet? Because if he hasn't, how the hell, you know, you keep talking about how are these women shaving their armpits in the Walker Apocalypse? How is Eugene keeping that awesome mullet pompadour up? All right, so let's cut off here and I'm going to tie up all the loose ends in the next chapter of this full review and that's going to be part three and it's going to be called You Can't Trust the Teasers. I'm Rockula. And this is Rockula Retrospective.